When Republicans won control of the Senate, they created a new committee to specifically focus on the issues of aging and long-term care policy. Joining me in the studio is the chair of that committee, Senator Karen Housley. Welcome. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, you recently were on Capitol Report talking about some of the objectives that you would have with this new committee. You've just introduced a bill that would create a palliative care advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, right out of the gate, I, I, I got a bill in there and, and we're going to have a hearing next week for, on palliative care. It was actually brought to me by the American Cancer Society and there is a need for, in the state, if someone is diagnosed with a serious illness, whether it's cancer or Alzheimer's disease like I have in my family or congestive heart failure, or ALS, Parkinson's, the list goes on and on, there's a definite need for a, a specific type of care that uh, helps with their quality of life to deal with the, with the illness instead of just going to the doctor and getting your meds and then sending you on home and, and deal with it. So many of these patients have issues with um, sleep or constipation or anxiety or nausea. There are a lot of other things that go along with each illness that sometimes those aren't being addressed. So I thought a committee, well American Cancer Society thought and I thought it was a good idea, um, a committee to take a look at uh, what we are doing in the state, uh, where we have access to it, where we don't have access to it, and why don't we have access to it, and come back to the legislature with their report every year. So 20-member board and uh, an advisory committee just to research palliative care. And some of that research involved what other states are doing. I understand 13 other states have some type of legislation about this type of care. Is that correct? Yep. 13 other states have, have a palliative care advisory committee and, and are implementing some of the suggestions to their legislature. So that's what I'm sure our advisory committee will be doing also. You mentioned the need for education in one of your statements about this. What are some common misconceptions of what palliative care is? Um, and I think ever since I dropped the bill, too, um, I'm hearing stuff out. Because to me, it, it, there was no um, misconceptions. I just thought this was something that luckily enough in our family, we were able to access it. Mm -hmm. um, but I did, I was reading on Twitter that somebody said, isn't that just hospice care? And hospice care is a, a subset of palliative care because it, it, hospice care deals with more towards near the end mm -hmm. of life. This would be dealing with all of the symptoms to help relieve some of the pain or anxiety or all of the, all of the symptoms that go along with the, with the chronic disease. My understanding is that palliative care includes a team of specialists, which may include physician, nurse, social worker, chaplain, or other care specialists who work alongside the patient's doctor. So it's, it's a team effort uh, to get that extra layer of support. Does this potentially make this care more expensive? And again, that's something that the, the advisory committee will be looking at because I, I don't know personally if it would be more expensive. I think um, it, if their insurance covers it or however, we're going to have to look at that, but I don't know if it's, if it's going to end up being more expensive. The bill language states, uh, it's sort of a long definition, but it goes into addressing the spiritual needs and facilitating patient autonomy access to information and choice. And so the choice piece I want to talk about because last session, uh, I forget who introduced a death with dignity bill, mm -hmm. uh, which is sometimes called assisted suicide or right to die. This is a particularly fraught issue in our society, but is that part of the choice that may come up, you know, if, if somebody has an ALS diagnosis and, and if that is one of the choices they want to pursue, do you expect this will come up? I'm hoping it doesn't come up because that wasn't the intention of the bill and I, I went to uh, MCCL, Minnesota Concerned Citizens for Life, and showed them the bill too and, and they were okay with it. That's not the direction I wanted to go. When, when we mentioned choice in there, it was a choice of treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, not all con cancer patients want to go through um, some of the recommendations. They might choose to go uh, another route mm -hmm. and so in this choice, you would be giving um, educated on what all of the options are out there, but but not assisted suicide or end of life. That's not where I was going with this. Bill. So it's more about quality of life, yep. um, living with uh, various illnesses. Yep, living with various illnesses and being educated on, on what you can do um, to help alleviate the symptoms, the pain, and and all of it that goes along with it. 
Is there a companion bill in the House? There is a companion bill, and I'm pretty sure Nick Zerwas, Nick Zerwas and I, Representative Zerwas, we were texting, and I think he got the bill, so I, I don't think he's dropped it yet, but um, Representative Zerwas of Elk River is carrying it in the House. Well, I look forward to learning more about palliative care and the advisory committee and the work of your committee. I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Shannon.